إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما Brothers and sisters, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah give us sincerity to speak the truth in the light of the Quran and the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to understand them, to accept them in the hearts, to implement them in our life. Alhamdulillah, to convey them to others. Amin thumma amin. Today's topic is about significance of seeking the knowledge. Significance of seeking the knowledge that it is very, very important for every Muslim to learn Islam, Quran and Sunnah. So what is the importance of that? That we will be inshallah discussing. And the first part I will be reading everything in Arabic inshallah. And the second part I will be reading its translation and its explanation inshallah. It is mentioned in Surah Al-Taha. And the chapter is 20 and the verse is 114 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَقُرْ رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمًا The second subject طَلَبُ الْعِلْمِ فَرِيضَةٌ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ عن عنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم طَلَبُ الْعِلْمِ فَرِيضَةٌ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ موضع ثالث فضل العلم والعلماء وهم ورثة الأنبياء الله أكبر سبحان الله وعن أبي دردا رضي الله عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول فيه علما من سلك طريقا يبتغي فيه علما سهل الله له طريقا إلى الجنة وإن الملائكة لا تضع أجنحتها لطالب العلم رضا بما صنع وإن العالم لا يستغفر له من في السماوات ومن في الأرض حتى الحيتان في الماء وفضل العالم على العابد كفضل القمر على سائر الكواكب وإن العلماء ورثة الأنبياء وإن الأنبياء لم يورثوا يورثوا دينارا ولا درهما وإنما ورثوا العلم فمن أخذه أخذ بحظ وافر رواه أبو داود والترمذي فضل تعلم القرآن وتعليمه عن عثمان بن عفان رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خيركم من تعلم القرآن وعلمه رواه البخاري أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله ولكم إن الحمد لله نحمد ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد إذا said that I will be discussing about the importance of seeking the knowledge and here we are talking about both the one who is seeking the knowledge, the importance of him, the merits and virtues of him briefly and the knowledge itself. What is the knowledge that we should be learning and why it is so important in our life. 
the first verse which i read it was from surah at-taha chapter 20 and the verse is 114 and it says wa qur rabbi zidni ilman this is the command of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given to the prophet of allah that whenever you make dua to allah ask allah to re- increase your knowledge so this the translation is say allah or my my rabb my lord increase my knowledge so or increase me in knowledge so this is a command which is allah has mentioned in the quran so it is very very important that if allah gives this command in the quran we can understand how important it is and this should be the dua of every muslim that whatever the knowledge is we have it is still insufficient it is is still incomplete it is still not completely comprehended and that's the reason even if you have understood something still you have to ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase your knowledge so that because of that inshallah with this dua even if you have understood something you will next time when you make this dua you will understand something better you will get more knowledge in that you will get you know enlightened more than what you have understood in the past so this is the first etiquette of a muslim who is looking for the knowledge who is seeking the knowledge so this this dua he should be asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah increase me in the knowledge the second issue which i read this hadith is from sunan ibn majah and this hadith in the book of introduction where the subject is talabul ilmi faridatun ala kulli muslim seeking of knowledge is compulsory is obligatory it is must upon every muslim man and a woman so this hadith is also very very important and this hadith is reported by anas ibn malik radhiyallahu an where rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said talabul ilmi faridatun ala kulli muslim seeking of knowledge is important upon every muslim is compulsory upon every muslim it is obligatory upon every muslim and this uh, generally the scholars have given the explanation to this and the sharah of this hadith is found in detail in imam sindhi's book of sunan ibn majah but the brief of that sharah is that when a person is making his way to learn the knowledge this is how he has to put this principle in front of him when a person is feeling hungry he eats food when a person is need if he is in need of any treatment medical treatment when he is ill there all those issues which are necessities of his life for a believer for a muslim seeking of knowledge is also part of his necessity it is important very very important because if you don't have the correct knowledge of quran and the sunnah of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam if you don't have the knowledge of the thing that can protect you from the hell fire that can protect you from the punishment of allah that can protect you from the wrath of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the knowledge that can lead you to the jannah the knowledge that can increase more and more reward for you in this life and in the hereafter the knowledge that can bring mercy to you so based on this principle it is very very important for us that we have to put this com- uh, principle in front of us that all the other necessities that i have all the obligations that i have all the obligations that i have the foremost is seeking of knowledge if a person does not keep this principle in front of him then he is a big loser so this is what the hadith says and the knowledge that a person should learn the obligatory knowledge the important knowledge the knowledge which should be must is the scholars have categorized in different ways like number 1 the aqeedah the knowledge of correct aqeedah if a person does not have the knowledge of correct aqeedah then he may be fasting he may be praying he may be a uh, paying zakat he may be performing hajj but still he will be considered to be a mushrik a kafir or a munafiq and that is a person may become munafiq a person may become kafir a person may become mushrik if he does not know the correct aqida because in islam correct aqida will distinguish a muslim from other person muslim from kafir muslim from mushrik muslim from munafiq 
So, Akida is the first thing this which we have to understand from this hadith. This hadith says the seeking of knowledge is compulsory upon every Muslim. So, Akida is first. Then, the second thing is the pillars of Iman, faith. Pillars of Iman, which is a Muslim must know complete understanding and correct understanding about Allah, about the messengers, about the angels, about the books, about the Qadr, the destiny, and about the Qiyamah. All these six pillars are the pillars of Iman, and Muslim must know this. It's not necessary that he has to know till the you know uh, extreme of the scholar or alim or mufti or allama. No, to the basic understanding of his what is the aqidah related to, what is the uh, fundamentals, what is the principles, what are the conditions for iman in Allah, iman in malaika, iman in messengers, iman in books of Allah subhanahu wa taala, iman in the qadr destiny, and iman in the akhirah. These are the main essence of faith. So every Muslim must know this. The second part, the third issue, wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah. The third issue is the five pillars of Islam. Number one, the shahadatin. Every Muslim must know the criteria of shahadatin. Whose iman, whose shahada is accepted. And this is very simple. If we see here in this European country, that the many people, they enter into Islam. Because of what? Because maybe a man, he is a Muslim and his girlfriend is a non-Muslim and they had illegal relationship. And then after that, when a person feels that, oh, maybe, you know, my family will not accept this woman as my wife, or maybe she is illegitimately became pregnant. So now I want to look for a solution where this act of mine becomes permissible or it becomes something halal. So what they do is they look for some excuses, some ways, some solutions to become Muslim. And this lady who comes to Islam, she does not come to Islam by understanding its criteria, by understanding its conditions, by understanding how the Iman will be, how Islam will be accepted. No, she doesn't know anything of that. She just becomes Muslim because her boyfriend is Muslim. And for that, they think, okay, by becoming Muslim, she will become halal for him, and also her family will accept that. In Islam, this is not the criteria. So the, for a Muslim, this is one example I'm giving you. For a Muslim, the first thing he should know, what is the fundamentals of shahadatin, where a person declares that, ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad rasulullah, that I bear witness that there is no God to be worshipped except Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad Sallallahu is the messenger of Allah. So a Muslim must know in the pillars of Islam, he must know the fundamentals of shahadatin. Number two, namaz, salah. Salah is the second pillar of Islam. Every Muslim must know about the salah. Salah, the conditions before the salah, conditions within the salah, conditions after the salah. Salah. What are the essence of it? What are the benefits of it? What are the merits and virtues of it? How Allah will accept it? How Allah will reject it? All this should be the part of knowledge when a person is uh, performing the salah. So this is also part of this hadith. Talabul ilmi faridatun ala kulli muslim. Seeking of knowledge is compulsory upon every muslim. So the third part is... Uh, Bila, better give to them. The third part is the fasting, or you can take zakat, or you can take hajj, same thing. Every Muslim must know what is zakat, how it should be given, when it should be given, what are the categories of the zakat, how it will be accepted, how, when it will be accepted, when it is rejected, everything of zakat. Same thing with the fasting, same thing with the hajj. So these are the fundamentals of faith and Islam. Fundamentals of faith, six. Fundamentals of Islam, five pillars. After that, whatever the etiquette, the scholars have divided the next part into the rights and the dealings between human beings, between the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
because if you are lacking behind somewhere in the rights of you know full, full, not fulfilling the uh, rights of the faith maybe allah will overlook to that maybe allah is full of mercy might forgive you if there is some shortcoming in your namaz in your hajj in your zakat or in your other pillars of islam maybe allah will overlook to that but when it comes to the dealing with the creatures of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala human beings plants trees the uh, natural resources animals other creatures of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will be standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will be answerable for every blessings that Allah has given to you around you. So all the favors around you, the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you don't have the correct knowledge how to deal with them, what are your rights to them or what are their rights to you, if you don't know that, then you will be in trouble. So to avoid that trouble coming in future, you have to know that. So this is the total uh, knowledge that every Muslim must know. Beside that, if a person wants to become an engineer or computer expert or IT expert or if he, mashallah, wants to become expert in education, all, uh, if he wants to become a medical doctor, anything is permissible. Those things are for your dunya. Those criteria, those titles, those educations, these are all for the dunya, but for the deen, as I said, your aqidah should be correct. Iman, six pillars of Iman, five pillars of Islam, and the rights of the creatures. These are the must. Rest of the things, ah, mashallah, is left to you, and Islam does not prevent you from getting that knowledge. Islam does not tell you that don't be doctor. Islam does not say that don't be IT expert. Islam is not saying that don't be social worker. No, this is all part of your activities. But the, the first three things which I mentioned, Aqidah, Iman and Islam, these are must. Then we go to the next hadith of Rasulullah Now this hadith is also very, very important hadith for every Muslim who is seeking the knowledge and the knowledge itself. The hadith is from Sunan Abu Dawood and Sunan Tirmidhi. And this hadith is authenticated by Shaykh Nasuddin Albani in his Sahih. The hadith says, the title of this, the essence, the theme of this is that the merits and virtues of knowledge and the scholars. The marriage and virtue of knowledge and the scholars and the scholars are the, they are the heirs of the prophets and messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the hadith says, وَعَنْ أَبِي دَرْدَى رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْ قَالْ سَمِعْتُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَقُولُ مَنْ سَلَكَ طَرِيقًا يَبْتَغِي فِيهِ عِلْمًا سَهَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ طَرِيقًا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ وَإِنَّ الْمَلَائِكَةَ لَا تَدْعُوا أَجْنِيحَتَهَا لِطَالِبِ الْعِلْمِ رَضًا بِمَا صَنَعَا وَإِنَّ الْعَالِمَ لَيَسْتَغْفِرُ لَهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ حَتَّى الْحِيْتَانَ فِي الْمَاءِ فضل وفضل العالم على العابد كفضل القمر على سائر الكواكب وإن العلماء ورثة الأنبياء وإن الأنبياء لم يورثوا دينارا ولا درهما وإنما ورثوا العلم فمن أخذه أخذ بحظ وافر رواه أبو داود التلميذي أبو دردا is narrating that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has said please pay attention to these words the Prophet said he who follows a path in quest of knowledge in seeking knowledge he is making his way to seek knowledge either going to the masjid attending the circles attending the courses or traveling from one country to another country traveling from one town to another town traveling from one uh, city to another city this is all mentioned here it says that prophet has said the one who makes his way to seek knowledge so what the reward that you get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah makes his way to the Jannah subhanallah you can see that this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowledge we need it Allah does not need this knowledge we need this knowledge and when we are making our way to the seeking of knowledge of Quran and Sunnah and we are not lazy goose sitting at home eating chicken and chips spending time on television if we are not like that we are spending our time even when you are at home 
you are you somebody told you okay buy this book and you will get a good knowledge in that so you make a way to buy that book maybe you have to travel from one town to another town maybe you have to ask somebody to post you or export it to you or import it to you from other country so that way all that thing is mentioned here so rasulullah is saying the first thing is that anybody who uses efforts to seek knowledge of deen quran and sunnah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make his path easy to the Jannah. This is the blessing and promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The another part of it, the angels lower their wings over the seeker of knowledge. Allahu Akbar. See, this lowering of the wings is means like the scholars have given different explanations. They, they say that the angels are always with this man to make the task easy. Sometimes a person, he finds his very heart he is trying, but he, it finds, he finds it very hard to reach a particular place. Angels are there side by side next to him to help him to go through that path. Sometimes a person might, might get, you know, some harm might come to him. Angels are there to protect him. This is general explanation, but the wordings, literal meaning, what the scholars have said that if we take as it is, it means the angels feel proud of themselves when they spread their wings and they see that the seeker of knowledge steps on their wings. Allahu Akbar. They think that this is an honor for us that maybe, you know, there are good people walking on the street, there are bad people walking in the street, but a seeker of knowledge, when he walks, we want him to step on our wings. So this is the literal meaning which the angels, you know, feel honor to themselves when a, a seeker of the knowledge wants, uh, works, uh, walks on them. Another hadith, of, the, another part of it, the inhabitants of the heavens and the earth, even the fish in the depth of this ocean, seek forgiveness for him. Allahu Akbar. A person who came out of his house to seek the knowledge, all the creatures in the heavens, we don't know, Allah knows them. Creatures in between earth and heaven, we don't know. Creatures in the sea, we don't know. But see, this is the, you know, the sense that Allah has given to the creatures and the respect that Allah has given to the creatures. Some of the scholars, they said that automatically this man is known to these people, these creatures of Allah. Otherwise, why would Rasulullah would say that they will make dua for him to forgiveness, for forgiveness? They know that this man has come out of his house only for seeking knowledge. He has traveled, he is traveling from one place to another only for seeking the knowledge. So whatever the errors that may be in his life, whatever the shortcomings that might be having in this man, these creatures of Allah, the creatures in the heavens, the creatures in the earth, the creatures in the sea, they say Allah overlooked his errors. Allah forgive him. Allah, he has come out to seek your, your knowledge of your deen. So forgive him, overlook his errors, shortcomings. So this is another, you know, blessings and merits and virtues for those who are seeking the knowledge. Another merits and virtue, subhanallah. فضل العالم على العابد كفضل القمر على سائر الكواكب. The seeker of knowledge. The one who seeks knowledge. He is a scholar in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If a person is expert in the field of tajweed, hifz of Quran, we call him alim of Quran. A person who is specialized in the fiqh, we say alim of fiqh. Person who is specialized in the field of hadith, we say muhaddith, alim of hadith. So here the hadith says that the scholar, the superiority of the scholar, this, you know, the comparison of the scholar to the non-scholar, to the person who is, you know, his normal person who is only praying and worshipping, he is not a student of knowledge, he is not the one who is striving to seek the knowledge. The comparison of this and that is like the full moon and the other stars. Allah. One moon, complete moon is superior than the, all the stars of the universe. This is how Allah SWT is respecting the seeker of the knowledge, the scholar, compared to all the other people. And the other comparison is not ordinary man. The other comparison is not an ordinary man. Abid. Abid means the one who is devoted his time 
fully worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he may be good at prayers, he may be good at fasting, he may be good at paying zakat, he may be good at performing hajj, but one quality is not there in him, and that is to seek the knowledge. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving him the priority over this man. A man who is seeking knowledge, he is like a moon compared to the stars, Allahu Akbar, in the global. Then, it's, it doesn't stop over here. Again, it continues. It says, وَإِنَّ الْعُلَمَاءَ وَرَثَةُ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ SubhanAllah. Again, great relationship, great honor. When people, when they die, people, they ask, does he got children? Is there any air left for, behind him? Some people, they say, no, he, we don't know. He was just living in this flat for many years. We have not seen anybody visiting him. We have not seen. So this is how you can see people, how they look down upon this person. People who has got no relationship, how the people look upon his status. But see here, the great honor for the seeker of the knowledge. Those who are seek, striving to get knowledge, Rasul is saying, Inna al-ulama'a waratatul anbiya. The scholars, the seekers of the knowledge, they are the people who are heirs of the prophets and messengers. Not biologically, but in, based on the knowledge. Because the Prophet ﷺ is making it clear to us, وَإِنَّ الْأَنْبِيَاءَ لَمْ يُوَرِّثُ دِنَارًا وَلَا دِرْهَمًا The prophets and messengers, when they die, when they leave this dunya, they are not leaving bank balance behind them. They are not leaving properties. They are not leaving houses that, okay, after I die, my wife will, you know, inherit this much wealth. If I die, my daughter will get this much wealth. If I die, my son will get this much houses. No, this is not with the prophets and messengers. Their wealth, their wealth is knowledge, deen of Allah. And who becomes the inherited, uh, inheritance of that? The seekers of the knowledge. The seekers of the knowledge, they take this responsibility. Yes, this is the knowledge given to us by our prophet, our messenger. We take it. I take it. And that means he will study. He will understand. He will implement. And then he will again pass it on to others because it is inherited from the prophets and messengers. Subhanallah. And then Prophet ﷺ has said, فَمَنْ أَخَذَهُ أَخَذَ بِحَظٍ وَافِرٍ and but only that knowledge and he who acquires it this knowledge of prophet and messengers has in fact acquired the abundant portion of the prophecy Allahu Akbar. then the last hadith inshallah and with this inshallah we'll finish the khutbah it says the merits and virtues of learning the knowledge what knowledge is better for us and how we can learn Iman, how we can learn Islam, how we can learn the dealings, what are the main sources. Today, subhanAllah, we go into the street, we find so many books, you know, booklets, and those books are not reliable, those books are not authentic. And we might find, you know, one book written by, the topic will be Islam, but it will be from a different sect. Another person will be writing Islam, but it can be from the sect which is declared in Islam as out of the fold of Islam. So we don't know. So best thing is, we again go back to the Quran and the teaching of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu What did he say? He said, hadith which is reported by Uthman bin Affan radiallahu anhu, qala qala Rasulullah Sallallahu man ta'allam al-Qur'ana wa'allamahu. This hadith is in Sahih Bukhari, where Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, reported by Uthman, the best amongst you is the one who learns the Quran. وَعَلَّمَهُ And then he teaches them. Allah So it's not the best who becomes Qari, Hafiz and Allama and then wherever there is, you know, festival he goes and, you know, he does his uh, program and then he comes back and people are not benefiting personally from him. No, that's not the one he's mentioned here. The first criteria is a person is the one who learns the Quran and then he teaches others. And I have given a speech on that, which inshallah the, the, the next Juma it will be the merits and virtues of learning the Quran. What are the merits and virtues of the people who learn the Quran and those who are teaching the Quran? That inshallah we will cover in the next Juma. But today 
let's understand this part of the hadith. This hadith says, the best amongst us is the one who learns the Quran and the one who teaches the Quran. So they go together. It's not like, you know, some of you are saying, okay, I just attended the uh, lecture of the Sheikh. He was half his Qari. He taught me Tajweed. And that's all. You became a, a scholar of Tajweed. But what happened then? You are saying, no, if I'll be paid for my job, I will work. If I'm not paid, then not. There was, there was a situation in India that one of the Imams, he was in the Fajr prayer leading the Jamaat. And after sometimes the people found that the Imam is not getting up from the last Sajda. So they were all, all the audience were in the Sajda and the Imam is, they think that they're, they're thinking something happened to Imam. And somehow somebody said, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, somebody, you know, he said, it must, must, there must be a serious problem. They all got up and they found this, this Imam has disappeared. He has gone. And they found the note left by the Imam. Imam has said that you people have not paid me for three months. So I prayed five daily prayers for three months without the wudu. And the second thing, now I will not continue, so I left you like this. So I'm going. So this is not the duty. This hadith says that there are two duties which every Muslim should know. This is the importance of the Quran. That you should, you, if you want to be the best in the sight of Allah, then you should learn the Quran. And then it is your obligation. This is your obligation that you have to teach the Quran. And it can be your wife, it can be your children, it can be your brothers, your sisters, it can be your friends, it can be Muslims, can be non-Muslims. But this is your obligation. The first obligation is that you should learn the Quran. And the second obligation is that you teach the Quran. If you want to be the best, if you want to remain, you know, uh, out of the list, it's your choice. But Islam has offered you this free offer that the best amongst you are those who are learning the Quran and teaching the Quran. And I gave a speech on that, that there are six rights that we owe to Quran. Number one is to understand, read the Quran in Arabic. Number two is to understand what Allah has said in it. Number three, you have to accept it in your heart. The Arabs, the pagans, the mushrikeen, they were still better than us in that sense. In Mecca, the Arabs were reading the Quran. Though they were pagans, they were idol worshippers. They were reading the Quran. They were reading the Quran in, in such an extreme way that if they have not heard one verse from Abu Bakr at night, they would not go to bed. So they would read, they would ask their slaves, their assistants to go and see what the new revelation has been revealed. So they would send their people and once they bring, there are so many evidences in the history and the Sira biography of Prophet that Arabs used to keep watch on Rasul to see what new message is revealed. So when the new message is revealed, they get the information through their, the spies and the jasus, and through them they would read the Quran, which unfortunately most of us we don't. The second is, the second right is to understand the Quran. Allah has mentioned in the Quran that this kuffar, the mushrikeen of Arab, they were understanding the Quran. That's the reason they rebelled. If, if I say something to you and you, maybe I'm abusing you and you don't understand, you will say, okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. God bless you. But the moment you know that I'm saying something bad to Mumzi, Mumzi will say, Achha, come in the gym, I'll show you. Saying, telling this thing to me? No. So this is how we have to understand, subhanallah. Arabs, when Prophet said, Qulu la ilaha illallah tuflihu, say la ilaha illallah and you will be successful. When they heard la ilaha illallah, it became earthquake to them, like a you know, tsunami for them. Only this statement, say there is only one God, no 360 gods. When they heard this from Rasul Qulu la ilaha illallah, they understood it. Allah has mentioned in Surah Saad, Allah has mentioned in Surah Qaf, Allah has mentioned in different places of the Quran that when the Prophet would say, worship one Allah, it would become like somebody throwing a mountain on their heads. How can we accept this man saying, give up the religion of your forefathers and worship one God, give up 360 gods and worship one God? Subhanallah. So they understood it. Unfortunately, we don't understand. So the first thing, reading in Arabic. Second thing, understanding it. And the third thing is accepting in the heart. Abu Talib, Prophet's uncle, he accepted Islam in his? In his? 
heart, but he did not say with his mouth. So see, the Arabs, the kuffar, they were good in reading, they were good in understanding, and they were good in accepting and hiding in their hearts. Because Abu Lahab, Abu Jahl, they also knew that what this Muhammad is saying is not his words, it's the words of Allah. And about the Christians and the Jews, Allah has said in Surah Al-Baqarah, الَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابَ يَعْرِفُونَهُ كَمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ That to the people of the books, to whom we have given the books, the Torah and Injil, they know Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Today they have changed it, so the scholars have got no choice to accept what they have in the books. But Quran confirms this, that the people of the scriptures, the Jews and the Christians, they know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They know Islam. They know Quran as good as they know their own children. They know that, that the Kuffar, the Mushrikeen, the Jews and the Christians, they were also understanding what Quran was and they were hiding it in their hearts, sealing it in their hearts. Then the fourth right is that we have to implement it. Those people who just read the Quran, understand the Quran, accept the Quran in their hearts, but if they don't implement it, then they are like the Kuffar. Because Kuffar did not implement. Abu Talib did not say La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah. He knew everything, but he didn't say that. Many, many Jews and the Christians in Mecca, in Medina, in Medina, they knew about the truth, but they did not accept it. So it is our duty to implement it in our life practically. Otherwise, we have not fulfilled the right. And the fifth right is, we have to convey it. We have to teach this Quran to others. And these five duties, reading, understanding, accepting, implementing, and teaching, these five duties should be done Till the death. Hatta yaqeen. This is what Allah has said to the Prophet that you have to fulfill your mission till your last breath. So these are the rights that we owe to the Quran. So con concluding this, what I have discussed today is the significance of seeking the knowledge. So it is compulsory upon every man and woman, Muslim, to seek the knowledge, and the best knowledge is the knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah. And you have heard the benefits and merits and virtues that if you strive to learn the deen, Allah will make your way easy for the Jannah. All the creatures of the earth and heaven, they ask Allah to forgive your sins. So your sins are forgiven and it's free. The people, if somebody dies, you ask you know, people to come together, Chalo khatam karte. let's do the khatam for the Quran. Why? Because you think that the person who died, he might benefit with that. So this is a free, you don't have to invite anybody in the, from the sea or from the earth and heaven. No, you can just, mashallah, strive for Allah's deen, Allah's religion, seek, try to learn the deen, and all these creatures of Allah will make dua for you. And finally, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu has said, that this is the greatest honor for everybody. The best among you is the one who is the one who is a student of Quran and a teacher of Quran. So this is the significance of the knowledge which I have. And if anybody needs this, please email me so I can forward this, the notes to you, inshallah. And next Juma, inshallah, we will be having a khutbah on the merits and virtues of learning the Quran and teaching the Quran. So inshallah, uh, hopefully, and the timing as you know, it's 12 o'clock. So be attentive inshallah. Pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whatever we have heard, may Allah give us sincerity to accept it, to implement it in our life, and to convey it to others. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna kahamidu majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna kahamidu majid. Wa aqimi salah.